springtime in Alaska. We can all feel spring's coming. Daylight until 8, maybe 8.30. Everything's starting to warm up. You can see dry pavement on the highways. To others, it means more time out in the snow machines. Time to get a new machine. Spring, this time of the year, is very fun and exciting time. It's time to get your garden ready. So much to do. With that, I wasn't able to go on this little drive. I had an appointment with the doctor on Friday, who proceeded to give me those two little jabs in the eye, and even charged me for it. But I'm getting used to it, but it does put me down for a few days. My wife, who's doing all the video work here, and my daughter went down to see our, our granddaughter play a basketball game down in Soldatna. And they decided to run down for the day to go see it and drive back. It looked like a beautiful drive. This is a long Seward Highway going south. We're starting here past Bird Point, and we're going to go head towards the mountain on the other side over there, which would be Turnigan Pass. I think we have some footage here almost at Alieska. I wish we had more there. I really like that spot. But we have, I don't know, you can see what it looks like. A lot of people from the lower 48 come up, visit, but it's... This time of the year is, uh, it's worth experiencing. You're probably getting one perspective here, a passenger. But the uh, mountain on the left, if we get some shots of that, this used to be a two-lane road, and it used to be halfway up that mountain. Very steep, very curvy, very dangerous, if anybody remembers that. It was uh, a lot of fatalities. There's a lot of fatalities on this highway, people going too fast. But they moved this highway down to the lower area, straightened it out. But it used to be halfway up that mountain. It's quite the experience. Things have changed. I'm going to be quiet for a bit, let you enjoy the scenery. As we come around this curve, you can see the mountains on the left or the driver's side. See how steep it is. That's where the old highway used to be up in there. 
and they took that out due to avalanches and it was constant maintenance and it was way up 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 high even after they moved the road lower avalanches still close off this highway in the winter mainly in the springtime we tend to see more avalanches uh, it's warming up the many layers of snowfall you know six inches one day and a week later you get eight they form layers uh, the sun beats down on the fresh snow and crystallizes it and then another say six or eight inches goes on top of that same thing sun crystallizes the top layer and you kind of get a cake layering aspect of it if you will and that's what sloughs those um, friction layers or lack of friction I should say where the ice is they uh, something comes along and just the constant weight of the snow or a little bit of moisture sun and that's what gives way and that's what causes your uh, avalanches kind of straight ahead and off to the right is Turnigan Pass that's where a lot of snow machiners love to go snow machining it's big open basin but there's steep mountains back there and they go high high marking some go all the way to the top and when they cut across those layers especially this time of the year this is when you're gonna start seeing the avalanches it's man-made man-caused and I shouldn't say man-made uh, snow machine cutting across and away she goes I've seen a couple of them break away. One down by Hope I'll never forget. That was, uh, man, trees exploding and can't got to be there to see it. It's pretty impressive, that much snow. We're almost to Alieska here. Alieska Ski Resort was a favorite place for me to visit when I grew up as a kid. Skipped many a day to go skiing with my buddies. It's well known around the world. It hosted some championship skiing. Wikipedia will tell you quite a bit about the little ski resort there. It was formed in 1959, I believe. They call the Alieska Ski Corporation. It struggled, uh, I want to say in the 70s. It was pretty good when we were there. And then right as I was uh, really getting into skiing, they ran into some financial trouble. Bad weather hit. Um, not enough snow, and I believe they sold it to a Japanese corporation in the 80s, I believe. Later, I'm, somewhere in the 80s. I'm almost positive. It might have been early 90s. You can see the mountain right now, far left mountain there. That bowl up there is all around that up on the top mountain is skiable. But it was sold to a Japanese corporation, and... It's not mentioned that I could see in the Wikipedia. But if you ever go to the lodge down there at the base, go into the hotel and look at all the wood. It's uh, all the wood that you'll see that is, uh, I don't want to call it trim boards because they're trim logs, but all that was shipped over from Japan, hand-hewn and put up. Very expensive. It was then sold again, which Wikipedia talks about, to a lodge or a corporation. It's actually a Canadian company that owns other resorts. And they still currently own it, I do believe. But it is a favorite place, even if you're a tourist, to take the tram up, take some pictures. You'll enjoy it. Right here on the left, a famous spot where the avalanches clear everything out and come across the road, block traffic. see at the end that's where Captain Cook finally realized he came down this turned his ship around said here we go turn it again it's a joke but he did really I think he really did say turn again uh, they were searching for the Northwest Passage and they came down here and they saw it was a dead end hence this our turn again arm was uh, the name that was created for it Well, we finally made it around Turnigan Arm, and we're now heading up on the other side of the inlet. And this is called Turnigan Pass. And as you can see, 
A lot of little frozen waterfalls right there, but we get to the top here. It's a slow, steady climb. It's a beautiful little view once we get up here in the, the pass, but we're climbing here right now from sea level on up, and once we get up there, you'll see how wide open it is, and it's this is the favorite spot where snow machiners like to to play. It's only a short jaunt from Anchorage, so it can be quite crowded. But again, we're going to let you enjoy this. I'm going to be quiet again. Well, this is life in Alaska. Weather was beautiful in the daytime. A few hours later, it clouds over and a massive uh, snow front comes in. That's one thing in Alaska. 
always be prepared. You never know when the weather hits. And even in nice weather, let's say in June, May, June, July, you can get those rainy, cold weather, and many a hiker has been caught out in the middle of the night without enough clothing, hypothermia, lost. It's one thing about Alaska. It teaches you the hard way. This isn't bad. It's not really piling on the highway, but it is hard to see. Just one of those, take your time, slow and steady wins the race. Typical Alaska. Well, hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed seeing the drive. It's been many a year since I've went south. I always go north. Pretty country down that way. I want to add one more topic here. Mainly for Alaskans that live in rural. Mainly, I'm going to focus this on from Willow, probably up to Denali. There is a proposed Alaska Long Trail. If you Google that, you will get some information. I probably will do a short video. Not a short, but something three to seven minutes probably. Uh, I want to bring the attention out there. It's coming up April 1st or around April. It's going to be impactful, so be a part of it. Talk to you later.